what, we're having this training out here in Utah. Um, you know, if you're interested, and I'm like, oh, Peggy, I don't fly. Like, I don't, I don't fly on a plane. Like, and she's like, oh, girlfriend, you get over that. Put on your big girl pants, and you know, like, she was just fun. So that's Peggy's personality. That's not mine. I'm very gentle with people. I don't like to push them, but I actually have learned to push them. And the reason why I've learned to push just a little bit with love is because I can see in them that God has a purpose greater than they realize at that moment, and I want them to see it too. And the only way for them to overcome that is to get a little bit uncomfortable and fail because in the failure and in the process is really where the beauty is. Jeff and I can tell you that when we hit, and maybe Brianne and Jessica could also say, when we hit Blue Diamond or Presidential Diamond, you guys probably think it would be the most monumental moment of your time of it. And you know what I would do? I would look at Jeff and I'd say, Jeff, it doesn't feel like we're hitting Presidential Diamond. Like, it just doesn't feel like this should, it doesn't feel like this is what it should feel like. And we just kind of looked at each other and we realized, it's the process that was where the beauty was. And we missed out in the joy of the process because we were so focused on trying to get where we were. So you have to definitely learn to enjoy that process because that is where the joy is and that's where the building and the growth of you as, a, as a, you as an individual and where you bless the most. It's not always that rank achievement, even though that's extremely exciting and, and the check that on the 15th is a lot better. <laughs> but but um, yeah, did I answer your question? you wanted or do you want more conversational pieces that we have basically you just keep feeding them a little bit more and you build that relationship I think Brienne was sharing about building the relationship with the person and learning a little bit what their pain points are so a little bit of personal relationship building and those conversations when you check in with them every three months new product launches are a great opportunity knowing if they have kids or a husband with a problem you know it helps you really um, personalize whatever they're dealing with and then just adding a little bit more on and also seeing you know is there someone in your life that could benefit from these products like you are you know those those types of things that you hear it's actually easier than you probably think it is and so then maybe turn them into or invite them into being a hostess and yes sharing with their friends just like mm -hmm. leave them right yeah, so she was saying, yeah, just invite them to host a class. And so sometimes that freaks people out. The biggest thing that, that I've found in our area, we live in a very rural area. Um, we're very much country people, kind of redneckish. We like it. It's okay. I still like to try to be you know, like all glam and all that stuff, but <laughs> I hunt. So, but, <laughs> but um, what we found is that people want to belong. They want like a community. And so if you have an event and they just come as a product user to learn and you, when they walk in that door, you're like, oh my gosh, like Jessica, I'm so excited you're here, you know, and you really make them feel welcome. They're going to want to come back. And that's when you start to build that community and they want to bring their network of people into that to feel that's the culture of doTERRA. They want that. that people are looking for that all the time. They want to belong. They want a purpose. They want a mission. So that's what you have to offer them and you have to show them. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. There, one other thing that we do is we walk, we tell them there are three pathways at the very beginning. So when we're, you know, if they get their oils, we make that appointment after to make sure we go over everything, and we let them know, hey, I just want to let you know there's three pathways. The first pathway is, of course, being the user. You're giving them permission to choose and just say which one fits for you. And you know what the best part is? Is when they tell me, like, I just really want to use my products. I'm like, that's so awesome. Here's my part for you. I'm going to make sure you know about all of our continuing education classes. If we do Facebook classes, I tell them everything I'm going to give them, and then I give them permission. I'm like, if something ever changes, guess what? I will take you through that next path or through that next door. And I'm telling you because you've created trust, because I've never then like called two days later and be like, so you ready to host a class, right? Because they just told me not to. I respected them, and they would come back and be like, you know what? I've been thinking. I love my oils. Could you show me? how to host a class. Could you show me how what it would look like to share oils? Because we respected them. Because people are just scared in the beginning. I mean, think about it. I know I was, I told the girl, don't ever ask me to buy one more thing. This is it. <laughs> and she was like, okay. You know, and I didn't know I was going to love the oils, but guess what? She didn't ask me to buy one more thing. Like, she just let me use my products. I'm calling her like, what the crap is in this and why is it working? You know? And so then, here I am today. You know? <laughs> So my point is, is if we just love them right where they're at, and we truly respect them, truly, they will come back to us because we've created trust. And the other thing that we do 
happens every so often just because, you know, your like our Facebook team like education group is so big now and we don't know who's adding in and making sure appropriate conversations are happening. We'll just pop in and say, Hey, if you've been wondering about learning how to share oils, jump on this webinar. And we just give them the link and then they can choose the jump in. So you just give options. And the truth is is it's relationship business. my question. I would like to know, because I think this may have happened to everyone, maybe some of you, but what happens, how do you support a builder who goes, who deviates from duplication? Kind of goes on their own path. They're the rebel, right? <laughs> no. with that is number one is most of the time they come back because it's not working and they're like okay this isn't working and the second piece is again you just love them for where they're at and you know a lot of times maybe people are reaching out and I'll pull in that leader and be like hey so and so has this question they don't know how to teach this class they're, they're doing things that aren't working and so uh, one thing that I've got really good at that I didn't do in the beginning and I wish I would have done is I never ever have a conversation with a second level or yeah, second level leader without one with my main leader there. I used to do that in the beginning and it just created this like, I wasn't edifying them. And so also, how do they know what they need to work on if they don't know what all the questions coming up are? So I'm like, hey, guess what? Let's jump on a three-way call. And I think the more that they see that what they're doing isn't empowering their leaders and isn't duplicating, they start to rethink the whole process. And I think there's gonna be some that still go rogue, but I still think that there's only so much that we can do, right? And as long as we keep that open door for them to ask more questions, but bring in those leaders that are showing them that they're not duplicating. That's my answer. So Jeff would be a good one to tap into this. He always tells me this is a volunteer army business, basically, because they're all their own business owners. Do you want to add to that one? Well, I think it's true. And again, I'll go back. Everybody's unique, right? It's a relationship business. It's always going to be just like we're sitting here right now. Why do you think these things are so successful? Because you get to talk about what's near and dear to you and your business and where you're at in your journey, right? So that's exactly what we're sitting here talking about duplicating, right? We want we want to help Jessica or Jen or Rianne or everybody else sitting here, Russell, get to where they feel comfortable with going to business. And honestly, you know, I think personally, um, that there was a lot of, you know, Jessica sitting here talking about, you know, the edge system, the power system. There's different pieces. If you've been around this long enough, she's talking that they're all combined, all one, all unified now, and very, very simple to follow. We created a lot of that confusion early on. Would everybody agree to that? No matter what system you use, there's a lot of great systems. So, you know, we directed people in different places. And, you know, love them for where they're at and always invite them, always continue to invite them. But do honor your time because time's the only thing that you have, right? And if you pour all your time into Facebook, I guarantee I want to just go back on that point. Facebook will be there in the morning when you wake up. If you wake up, you can get back on and answer all those. So prioritize things. I don't want to get off track, but you know we do see things a little differently, and, and we've been very blessed not to have a lot of that problem with our team. And I think that's because we try to address those things early on, not control, and recognize that. You know, it was hard for me, quite frankly. I came from the corporate side, an entrepreneur. I would hire and fire until so I found what I needed and got the job done. That is not this business at all. And a lot of us, how many are still working day jobs? How many haul buckets? Right? Yeah, I know you got fired this morning, Russell. I got ruined. You got to keep your day job. But that's good. That's, that's awesome. But always remember that because we have people on our teams that, you know, told us for years that they didn't want to do this. Actually, one of them, one of our diamonds, one of our qualifiers, she wanted to do her own oil business early on. And I still tease her to this day, how'd that work out for you? But you have to just continue to nurture, love them where they're at, and hopefully they continue to move towards what you're saying. And they do come back, because life happens to all of us. So wait for those opportunities, and then wait for that teachable moment, and try to help them along, and pull them to not pull or drag, or whatever you want to call it, help them get to where they need to be at that moment. And don't, don't forget it's a people business. It's always going to be.
So I am, you all heard of Empowered Success, right? Okay, so we're talking about duplication and why that's important. So we're pretty lucky to have Brienne here. We have like a lot of like big doTERRA people here. Uh, so we've got our master distributor here, Justin Harrison, as well. He's got his own topic tomorrow night, but tonight, I thought it would be good, Justin, if you can just, uh, sure. he's been, so he's, I have my own topic tomorrow night, right? <laughs> we have a board of, of presidential leaders that are helping with this empowered success. We get the best and brightest minds all together to come up with this. Uh, Justin and Eric Larson are actually the chairman of that committee. So Justin, will you just talk a minute about empowered success, why that's important in a duplication uh, kind of standpoint, frame of mind? All right, so here we go, Justin Harrison. This is why I should have went to Boyd's group. <laughs> have you all seen Empowered Success? So the most beautiful thing, and Jessica is part of that committee, and we're really excited for the final, like we're really excited, aren't we, Russ? We're super excited. Super excited because seriously, the time has been really, really intense and so worth it to create this. Um, and the, what excites me most about it is you don't have to create it. Yes. And I can't tell you, and I know Brianne has seen this on a very personal level, the amount of time that can get consumed out of your life by creating a program or a system to move your business forward. I mean, it, it will, you think it's worse than Facebook. <laughs> okay, because you'll get into it and it's just like days and weeks and then your life goes by and it's, and it's exciting, but you're not doing the things that you need to do to build your business, right? Those day-to-day -day things. And so now that this is done and it's the company sponsored, company endorsed, company promoted system, <coughs> you talk. <laughs> You're gonna see it everywhere. You're gonna see it all corporate events. Your teams are gonna be trained on it, right? So don't reinvent it. And everything is there that you want. Now here's the other beautiful thing. Jessica and I talked about this this morning. You can use as much or as little of it as you would like. Did you catch that? There's, a, there's an amazing array of material there. Use what you like, okay? And teach and train on that. And it will lead to duplication. And when you have duplication, your team will take off on its own. And isn't that what we're all hoping for? This is the only business where your job is to fire yourself. Okay, where your job is to train other people to replace you. And it's a good thing. Because in corporate America, I'll pick on Russ, because he's in corporate America. If he's training his replacement, what does that mean for Russ? One of two things. He's either getting promoted, which is awesome. I like that. Or, or he's getting the other door. Right? He's getting out. Or, or he's coming to... He's coming to our side. We'll have to do a bit of battle over that later. <laughs> so, right. But for us, for us, if you train someone to replace you, that's a huge win. Right? Huge win. And Empowered Success does that. So, please use it. Please. Pretty please. Thank you. So Jessica wants me to make this statement because it's one of those factoids that runs your business. So noodle this, ponder this. What you do duplicates. And also what you don't do duplicates. So if you're not having enrollments in your team, where should you look first? In the mirror. Okay, because that means you're not having enrollments most likely. <clears throat> right, so just keep in mind everything duplicates. Everything you do. Somehow your team knows. I don't know how they know, but they do. They figure it out. And so stay engaged. Use the system. The hours and expertise that have gotten into this is crazy. We're grateful we're crossing the finish line actually tomorrow. It's like, those of you going to leadership, you're going to see the next phase of that. So it's super, super exciting. All right. Okay, back to Jessica Jen. Incredible potential in them, and there's 
smart girls that can do this. Um, in terms of duplication, like I do tend to enroll about like a dozen people a month on average, like anywhere from eight to fifteen. Last month, all three of them had zero. Okay, so it's like they know we're doing classes, we're doing this. There's a variety of reasons, but my question is because of that, I have to keep building my business. So I put like under one leg, I put like two shares and a new builder under one of my people's legs, right? So when it comes to like duplication, if they're not doing it and like, you know, let's do a biz meeting, let's talk about it, let's do a three-way call, whatever. The reason that they're not showing up is they just say they're so busy. So they get home at 6.30 and then they have hockey and then they have this and then they have that and they have to get the kids. I mean, I get it. I started a and b and all this crazy stuff. At the same time, I started my business and worked every night from 10.30 till 2 in the morning. And that's how I like hit silver in three months because it was my passion. But how do I help them see it? Like, I don't want to push them, but I want them to step up and say, is this something you really want to do it? So that's the first thing, is how do I help them see it and have value where they're at and what they have? And the second part of that is, in terms of like putting two or three builders under them, who's coaching them? Because now I'm coaching like tons and tons of people. How do I help them take some like initiative there? Like, what would you recommend? First thought, I'd say actions speak louder than words. That's my first thought, is actions speak louder than words. And I think that we hold on to people in hopes that their actions have told us that at this moment, they're not ready. And so we, we can push them up the hill. Like, it's not fun to push a boulder up the hill. It takes the joy out of what we do. You're up, you're showing you are an awesome in and rolling. Find someone that will run with you. That doesn't mean we leave them aside. That doesn't mean that we think that they're not. But right now, like, it's okay. And I wish someone would have told me that because I kept just putting more people, putting more people, right? And so what happens is, is now you have these huge teams that are growing. And guess what? You're mentoring all of them. You're doing all of the calls. You're doing all of the classes. So there's, there's two sides of it is, number one, you can't have those two conversations, you know? I'm mean, all about crucial conversations being very clear. Where are you right now? This is for you, not for me. What do you want? And if you say you want this, what are the action steps that we can take together? And will you do this with me? And then see if they show up. Invite them to that next call. Invite them to that next task. And if they don't show up, guess what? There's your answer. And sometimes it's actually harder on us to let go and it, would, and it would be a lot easier just to start over. So, as much as I know that it's, that sounds so painful, right? Like, what? Start over. But what I've found is when we release it, and we no longer, like, it's true, you guys, that you're held hostage by sometimes these legs. We're held hostage because the fear of what to do next. But what happens when you let go and no longer hostage, and you're rolling like crazy, and you find someone that runs, freaking fun. Like, it is so fun. It brings all that joy back. It reminds you why you're doing this instead of us just spinning our wheels over and over again. So, I know it's not the perfect answer, but honestly, I would say have that crucial conversation and watch their actions and find someone that is fun and brings you joy and run with them and see what happens. Maybe they'll be your diamond lake. Maybe they'll be your blue diamond lake. But right now, they're not saying what they're supposed to be doing, right? They're just telling you what you want to hear because of the fear of letting you down. So release them from that fear and let them know, I will love you no matter what. And I want you to do exactly what you're supposed to do. And if that's not this, it's okay. I just want to make sure that I know what my next step is. And just be really loving with that. Okay. So look how popular these guys are. Like everybody's coming to listen to you. So Brianne, Jen, Jess, Jeff, Justin, wherever you went. Uh, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. That was